Have you ever missed a deadline? Turned in work that wasn't your best because you didn't have enough time to polish it? Most of the time when that happened to me, I had ample time to complete the work and just procrastinate until the last minute. We all do it, it's human. But imagine you do all that you can and you're expected to complete an assignment that would take five weeks in just one week. You do your best, grinding until the last minute and it's just not enough. You scroll through Twitter, read through some articles about your work. Everyone's talking about how it seems unfinished and messy. Maybe if you were, hypothetically, let's say, a gaming developer, they might describe your work as buggy, glitchy, unfinished. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have taken the gaming world by storm as online users continuously share bugs and glitches throughout the games. Some fans have found the glitches funny, while others regret pre-ordering the game for $60. Some of us care more about the story and the nostalgia, and we're playing the games anyways. However, all sides agree that the game should be patched, and the quality of the gameplay and graphics could negatively impact the reputation of the Pokemon franchise. Many Pokemon haters and fans alike are angry at the game developers, claiming the game is unfinished, glitchy, lazy. Spoiler alert, I do not think Game Freak developers are just lazy. I love Pokemon. But I hate Game Freak. Game Freak is easily, in my opinion, one of the worst, uh, laziest developers, I'd say. Game developers are human, just like you and I. As a software developer myself, I've spent hours writing code and debugging. I've worked 12 hour days. I've come home when the project is not finished because I just want to see my family and get some sleep. As another person out there who's been exhausted from that nine to five grind, instead of game developers, we should blame corporate greed, an overly devoted fan base, and limited hardware. Let's face it. The Nintendo Switch is 10 plus years behind other consoles and gaming PCs. Hardware limitations place gaming development companies under tight constraints. The PS5 can output 8K resolution, while the Switch is limited to 1080p. Nintendo Switch games, like the new Pokemon games, will not perform as quickly and they will never look as good as PS5 games. We have to hold realistic expectations. For the wise guys out there, you're probably thinking, yeah, 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 the Switch sucks. But, 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 but what about Breath of the Wild? While it's a separate phenomenon that I'd like to explore at some point, that this game performs incredibly well on Switch hardware, the Zelda team produced Breath of the Wild with over 300 developers and designers in a span of over five years. That's approximately double the employees who worked on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with almost double the time frame. To put the timeline into perspective, Pokemon Sword and Shield, the last main series Pokemon game, was released in November 2019. Game Freak developers had three years to complete Pokemon Scarlet and Violet while simultaneously releasing game titles like New Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Game Freak employs 169 people, which is less than half of the employees that worked on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and less than one-tenth of the employees that work at Riot Games. With shorter timelines and less employees, we cannot expect the games to be as technologically and graphically advanced as other big titles in the industry. So, why do these companies set timelines for two games in one year? Why do they force developers to rush out unfinished games? You, me, us, all Pokemon fans, they release games non-stop because we will buy them anyways. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet pre-orders outsold all Nintendo games in history while also selling over 10 million copies in the first three days. We will buy the games before we even see them. As a result, in the fiscal year ending February 2022, the Pokemon Company revenue increased by 70.4% to 1.6 billion US dollars. The company's net profit increased by 123% to $320 million. Game Freak alone boasted a net profit of 170 million US dollars. The company could afford to hire more developers, but why would they if we buy their games anyways? There's no signal to the company that something's wrong other than angry tweets and articles that may be dismissed as chronically online Pokemon haters, which to be fair, Game Freak receives a lot of feedback from. Game Freak's role in the Nintendo universe is clear. They only make the Pokemon games. However, their ownership and decision process is less clear to the public. Game Freak is not directly owned by Nintendo. Instead, it was established as a joint investment by Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. In some ways, all three own each other, as each company owns shares of the others. The Pokemon Company, then, was created by all three to manage their overseas Pokemon stores, but they have since gained an ambiguous amount of power. The confusing ownership obscures the party responsible. Is Nintendo pressuring Game Freak to release games on faster timelines? 
Is Game Freak refusing to hire more developers despite large profit margins? Is the Pokemon company requiring multiple games per year from Game Freak? It's difficult to decipher the truth from our standpoint. We cannot figure out who to blame. To the Pokemon company, Nintendo, Creatures, Game Freak, we are happy to wait for finished amazing games. To Game Freak developers, thank you for carrying on our childhood memories with an amazing new storyline and lovable characters. Thank you for adding in YouTuber and streamer representation with the hilarious new gym leader Iona. To the Pokemon fans who are unhappy with the series, stop pre-ordering games. Wait until the game's release and don't buy a game if you're not satisfied with its performance. If you enjoy the new game despite the graphics, like myself, play it and hope that they hear our concerns. They are planning to patch the games and if they fix the bugs and the glitches, this game has the potential to be one of my favorite games of all time. But if you do choose to place blame somewhere, then place blame where it's due. After two new main storyline games with a combined playtime of over 100 hours in one year, I think that Game Freak developers did all that they could. After playing through the games, I realized that developers innovated Pokemon games this generation through high stakes, emotional, mature plot lines. Characters were much more developed. Real emotions were felt during this adventurous sequel. I won't give out any spoilers, but trust me that the game story is heartwarming. You won't be disappointed. My final conclusion is that the games are not bad. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were not poorly designed by lazy or incompetent developers. They were just unfinished. We have to stop blaming developers who worked long hours on an understaffed team with unrealistic timelines and extremely limiting hardware. With everything against them, Game Freak developers created a beautiful story. The first open world Pokemon games, creative character designs, and another journey to carry on the nostalgia in our hearts. Game Freak developers raised us, and I think it's time for us to come to their defense. Thanks so much for listening. My name is Gigli. You can find me on Twitch if you want to join for some Pokemon Scarlet and Violet playthroughs and other commentary. <laughs> Bye! Hope you enjoyed!